Hey YouTube frogs, just to preface, we will not be covering the new Alley Hunter bow in this video because this is pre-recorded prior to the new banners dropping. We wanted this video to be published on the day of his banner, which means testing and editing has to be done before. We hope you YouTube frogs understand and hope you enjoy this video. Alrighty YouTube frogs, it is time for another weapon comparison video, this time with Pound or Tartaglia. Thank you guys so much for the support on the Hutong video and the Bendy video. I'll be taking in your constructive criticism for this one. But yeah, so 1.4 second half is just around the corner and Tartag and Rosaria are going to be coming up. Which means that I'll be testing out as many 4 star weapons and 5 stars that I have for these respective characters. For Tartag specifically, we have... Eight different bows we will be testing. We have the R5 Almost Bow and the R5 Skyward Harp. And then for the four star bows, we will be having the new from the Windbloom event, the R5 Windbloom Own that I level up to level 90 since uh, during this event there's a 1.5 EXP gain. As along with the R5 Stringless, Viridescent Hunt level 80, Black Live War Bow level 80, Prototype Crescent level 80, and R5 Rust level 80. I will not be using the energy recharge bows because he is focused as a DPS. These bows are meant for more support e utility characters like for Venti in the previous video. So, with that being said, uh, we will begin with the F2P weapons, of course. Uh, Prototype Crescent is going to be the baseline. It's going to be um, the lowest level, basically. If you have nothing else to use, then you'd be using the Prototype Crescent. Though, you will quickly come to see that you'll always be using the Windbloom Ode, especially if you just completed the event previously, right? It's going to be um, an upgrade over the Prototype Crescent. But nonetheless, I will still be testing this. So we will begin with the Prototype Crescent, R1 level 80. Then we will move to the Black Live War Bow. Then the Viridescent Hunt, which is the BP weapon. The Gacha R5 weapon, the level 80 Rust. And then for these two weapons, they're going to be in their own little category because we do have them R5 level 90. The Stringless is a Gacha weapon and it has Elemental Mastery passive along with the Wimbledon Mode. They both have the same base attack with the same Elemental Mastery, just a different passive, right? So we will be testing Stringless and the R5 Wimbledon Mode as well. And then once the four stars are done, we will test the R5 Almost Bow and the R5 Skyward Harp in that order. So R5 Skyward Harp will be the last bow that we test just strictly because the crit rate and the crit damage passive is so massive and also the base attack is the highest, right? All right, with that being said, chat, let's go through my tar tag. I want you guys to understand that my tar tag is already C6. Oh, I C6'd him before on his very first banner. Um, not that I actually prefer his gameplay style, but I did this because, well, we have an emote on the, on the Twitch channel based off of him. And that's all I will say on that matter. So just keep in mind that the damage um, based off of the C6 shouldn't change for C0, right? Since we're going to be testing Q damage in two forms and also the stance change damage, right? For the talents, unfortunately, because I do have C6, that means that my E and my Q, which are the most important skills for him, are increased by three levels. And I do have him base at level eight. So it's level eight plus three, all right? I want you guys to understand that the damage that you see here will be higher than usual. Again, uh, with the E, which will be the stance stage damage, right? Uh, we will be testing the first hit damage at 82.3%, which is the first hit, and then we will immediately go to a charge attack. So for his testing, we'll be doing left click. Uh, we'll be basically doing a hold left click the entire time, right? Doing the first normal attack, and then we'll be doing the charge attack damage. So we'll be seeing 82.3%, and then 127.4, and 152. These will be our numbers to test. And then for the Q, we'll be doing in melee stance off of the Q damage. So mine will be 882, which will be significantly higher than, well, if you had no C6 tar tag, right? Or C5 tar tag in this case. Keep that in mind that my damage is going to be significantly higher just due to the fact that I have higher talent levels. But the purpose of this comparison video is to test comparison damage, relative damage between each of the weapons. I hope you guys don't mind on that front, yeah? All right, with that being said, artifacts and we'll be using the four heart of death set all right these are the artifact details we have seven crit rate 21 we have 3.9 crit rate 33 crit damage seven crit rate 20 crit damage hydro damage uh, offset piece with 5.8 crit rate seven crit damage and lastly the mask crit rate 31 percent and crit damage 28 percent pretty nice piece that we got recently for this testing now i know that i said in the venti video that i'd only be using a crit rate mask i'm not going to say anything this time 
Uh, I'm just going to be going off of testing. Uh, but most likely, I'll be maintaining these stats. I wanted to do crit damage mass, but I realized that it skews the damage numbers too high. And also, the, the weapons that give crit rate don't give that much crit rate. So we can still do the testing on top of it. I'll just have to let you guys know that the crits are going to be more, uh, more common. Right? And that being said, uh, hopefully we can do an average damage this time. Uh, where we do both crits and non-crits. And then based off of the crit rate that I have, we can calculate the average damage output. Hopefully that is possible, but we'll see, all right? So finally, this is using the base weapon. These are our limited stats, all right? So this is with an attack percent bow. I want you guys to understand that. So we do have, starting with 750 base attack, with this particular build, we have 150% attack about, and our base crit rate and base crit damage are 59.8, which we can round up to 60% crit rate and 160 crit damage, all right? So he does also have 119 elemental mastery from his artifacts and we have 90.4 hydro damage bonus from his ascended stat cool so these are the baseline uh values for testing hopefully that will be a solid so we will begin with the prototype crescent and my team for this testing is as standard as it should be zero resonance on the team only using two characters and we're going to be using bennett against the cryo regicide boss all right so quick reminder we are beginning with the Prototype Crescent level 80 weapon, right? And we have 60 crit rate, 160 crit damage with 119 elemental mastery. How I'm going to lead this is I'm going to break the Kryala and then we're going to stance change E and then we're going to press Q first. Hopefully we crit. Uh, if we don't crit, then we're going to have to reset this. But uh, Preach, yeah, then we crit. So it'll be stance change and then Q damage and then we'll be doing our charge attack combo. That'll be the testing. And then we'll come back and we'll do a vaporized one as well. So with the Q damage, we'll have two damages, right? Because a couple of the weapons have elemental mastery as the passive. And I want to be, be, be sure to capture that, especially with the stringless, right? Because the stringless is Q damage is going to be pretty, pretty fat. So, all right, let's get to work. First step, prototype. Okay. Nice, 35.6, 3.85, and then 6, and then 7.1. So 3.85, 6, and 7.1. Alright, so this time we're going to go back. Uh, we are going to vaporize ult, the prototype crescent, and we'll see how much damage we do. Keep in mind that I do have a little bit of elemental mastery from my uh, artifacts, about 119, right? So, I'm going to be doing more than 2x damage. Alright, please crit. Very nice. 86.7k crit. Keep in mind that when we're using these weapons, right? Uh, for the prototype crescent, I'm not able to use the passive. I'm not going to test the passive. So, if you manage to do a charge attack hit on a weak point prior to stance changing, then you do get 36% attack boost. Keep in mind that that will raise all the damage numbers. Um, by roughly, I would say about 20%-ish, based off of if I have like 100% uh, 100 uh, attack, right? Actually, it's more like 18%, but yeah. Now, let's move to the Black Cliff Orbo. This, this weapon has higher base attack, uh, no attack percentage, and has crit damage as its secondary stat. We're not going to be utilizing the passive, so keep in mind, if you are using the Black Cliff weapon on him, uh, the damage that you see is the minimum amount of damage you should be dealing. And with these stats, we, sh we have lower attack, right? This is expected because we don't have attack percent, but we have massively higher crit damage at 193.9%. Same crit rate, all right? Same element of mastery, let's go. All right, so we have 60 crit rate and 193.9 crit damage. Let's see our damage output. All right, let's first, uh, that's the Q. Very nice, 35.6. About the same, huh? 5.9, 7.1, 3.8. I think that was the same amount of damage. The likely factor of this happening is because I have so much crit damage naturally that the buff to my crit damage is not as much as it should be. Because I have so much crit damage, my attack percent is actually lacking in that aspect. But I will test in just one moment. That means the crit rate weapon should be weaker in terms of damage output, but there'll be more consistent crits. Okay. Wow, it actually is the same. 
I think very, very, almost near identical. That's actually pretty surprising. Prototype Crescent R180 and Blacklift Warble R180 uh, currently are doing the same amount of damage. Let's test the Q Bay Prize damage. Let me change this back to uh, Blacklift Warble. And right back. And we'll kill. 86.7. So it is the same. You guys notice this? I'm using the Blacklift. All right. Next test up is from the Blacklift Warble. We go to the Viridescent Hunt. So in this case, we're dropping the crit damage, but we're gaining 25 crit rate. And we also lose a little bit of the base attack. So with the Viridescent Hunt, my stats now look like 1.54 attack. So lower attack, which is expected. Um, but we do gain up to 85 crit rate and we have 160 crit damage as usual. So um, because I'm not using a crit damage mask here, understand that the higher crit rate means more consistent, right? So even though I'll be doing a lower amount of damage on the crit, I'm critting more often. So keep that in mind. And also this is easier to build, right? Crit rate weapons are typically um, a lot nicer to build around. All right, here we go. Let's stance change. Two damage. 30.1 crit with 3.2, 5, and 6. 3.25, 5, and 6. All right. That gives us a clear understanding that it is weaker. All right, so this is going to be uh, vaporized Q damage. Okay. Stand far back. Stance change. Q damage. 73.3. Ah, uh, it's 3.2. Okay, let me let me modify that. 3.25. To compare, um, Beard Descent Hunt, it crit about 15% less. But it does have 25% more crit rate, right? We went from 60 to 85%, which basically in my numbers, uh, increased my crit rate by like 40%, right? Since we went from 60 and increased all the way to 85, and then the ratio of 85 over 60 is about 1.4, right? Um, so keep that in mind, is more consistency, and also the passive is actually very strong on him in, in melee stance. So consider that as a BP option. Now moving forward, now that we're done with the three four-star level 80s, we're going to be moving to the more stronger gacha weapons, right? So let's test Rust R5 next. With Rust R5, our attack goes back up to 1.8k, but our crit rate and crit damage are 60 and 160, which were the vanilla crit rates that we had. And also, consider that uh, this increases the normal attack damage by 80%, right? So with this, my Hydra damage goes from 90 to about 170. So let's see how much damage we do. The normal attack should be significantly stronger than the Q. So keep that in mind when using this weapon. All right. Stance change. No vaporized Q. We get a 35.6 and 5.6. 5 5.2. 5 ah, okay. So, so this actually does not benefit charge attack that much. So we are doing the same Q damage because we have the exact same stats as the prototype crescent. That would make sense. So I'm going to do the normal attack and charge attack sequence again, but I'm also going to do the vaporized Q damage. Okay. Then change it away. Q damage. 86.76 expected. All right, so 5.2, 5.1, 6.8. 5 5.2, 5.1, 5.7, or 6.8, sorry. Okay, that's the vape right, that doesn't count. Oh, 5.6, so 5.6. I misread, so 5.7, I got it. Uh, the Q damage is the same as the Prototype Crescent and the Black Lab Warble at 35.6 on the Q and 86.7 Q with the Vaporize. Uh, the normal attack damage on the Prototype Crescent on the first hit was 3.85. But for the Rust R5, it was 5.2. That's a pretty significant jump in terms of normal attack damage. And then the charge attack damage decreased slightly, right? We went from a 6k and a 6 to a, a 6 and a 7.1k down to a 5.7 and a 6.8. So that matches well with the Rust passive. So think about it like this, right? So from 80% would mean that from the 90.4 Hydro, we're going to 170 Hydro. And then in the stance change where we're doing charge attack, instead of 90.4, we're actually doing 80.4, right? So in terms of additional Hydro damage bonus, instead of doing 1.9, we're doing 1.8. That makes sense for the very minor 5% decrease on the charge attack. Cool. So that completes the R5 Rust. Let us next test the R5 Windbloom Ode, which for the F2Ps, uh, will be the weapon that you receive for free. So it's in comparison to the Black Lip Warbo and the Prototype Crescent. Let's test it out. I have mine at R5 level 90. Um, hopefully, if you guys are going to use it and considering Tartag, then you'll get this level 90 because you save weapon crystals during the current event. 
So, let's test it out. Windbloom Ode. Our Elemental Mastery goes from 119 to 284. So, the Q Vaporize damage will be significantly stronger. We'll be keeping track of all this. Same crit rate, same crit damage, and the attack is 1.6k. Guys, a friendly reminder if you guys want to see the artifacts and the talents, it'll probably be in the beginning of the video because I go through all that stuff, right? So. All right, first bit of damage. Stance change to remove the pyro here, okay? Q damage, 37k. And after pressing E, we're doing 3.5. Okay, this is very hard to see. I have to redo that. And instead of proccing, getting from my Q, and let me do this just this pure stance change damage because I, I, it's hard for me to see. And keep in mind uh, that when we're using Tartak, right? Uh... The, after using elemental skill, we receive a 32% attack boost, right? Which is probably why the more Q damage there and also has higher base attack. Consider that. All right, let's pay attention to the normal and charge attack sequence when we proc the wind bloom. All right, let's see it. First the stance change. Okay. Ah, so 6.2, 7.4. Six point two and seven point four. Let's just check check the normal damage here. Three point nine. Okay, perfect. So four. Three three point nine nine, which is four. Got it. So that makes sense. Wind Bloom Ode R five level ninety is slightly stronger than the prototype crescent and the black cliff warbo. Um but Weaker than the Rust R5 in terms of normal attack damage, but stronger than the charge attack. So, it's actually, you know, pretty decent. So keep in mind that with the Wind Bloom O, we are doing slightly more damage, but because that is because mostly it's level 90, right? And also, we're do getting a 32% attack boost. The main benefit of the Wind Bloom O is the Elemental Mastery, so your Q should be uh, critting Elemental Mastery uh, for a little bit more. And we will see that right now. So, let's compare. Uh, to compare, the base we're looking at is 86.7k crit. So we should be doing more than that. Let's see how much we do. Okay. Stance change away. So we keep the uh, pyro. And. Nice. 108.77. So that is the exact use of this elemental mastery boost. Very solid. Uh, that is expected for an elemental mastery bow. So you can expect the stringless to actually do even more damage than that, right? So we just tested the R5 level 90 wind bloom ode. Uh, with 165 elemental mastery. We noticed that. This is a level 90 weapon, so compared to the level 80s, it should be relatively equal, or maybe even slightly weaker. Um, but the Q damage is significantly stronger, right? So we're typically seeing 86.7 on all the other weapons. Virus Hunt was lower at 73.3 because it didn't have a crit damage boost. This had 108.7k. So now, the right weapon to compare this against is the Stringless, which is a kind of support Q only kind of build, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, suggest this for a melee stance, but it's fair. it should be fair to test this, right, in comparison to the R5. Uh, level 90 Windbloom Ode. So let's see how much damage difference this really does for the Q with a 48% elemental skill and damage uh, burst damage increase. So before we do that though, we're going to be testing the uh, standard damage, right? No vaporize, nothing, just charge attack, standard stuff. So we have 1.6k attack, 284 elemental mastery, 60 crit rate, 160 crit damage, and 90.4 hydro. This is with the stringless, which I don't think, don't recommend uh, you do with melee stance. But for Q burst, you'll see the significant damage increase. Okay, let's see. Stance change, Q vaporize damage is 40k, and then 3.5, okay, these are the right numbers, 3.5, 5.3, and then 6.4. So we are seeing less damage from the normal charge attack damage, but you notice that the Q got a fairly nice increase. And then for vaporize, it should hit even harder. So stringless, which is meant for a elemental burst proc, let's see how much damage we do. We did 40k cube before, and that was without vaporize, so let's see the damage increase here. Alright, stands change outside. 117.5k crit, very nice. So that is the highest crit that we've seen so far, and it's a fairly nice amount of damage, so... That is definitely what the Stringless is built for, and it definitely performed as expected. Uh, it is about 10% stronger than the Windbloom Ode at R5 level 90 with the same, uh... Um, elemental mastery and then significantly stronger than all the other weapons but not in the sense for normal charge attack so that testing wraps up all of the four star weapons we just finished r1 crescent pike black live warble r1 viridescent hunt r5 rust 
Windblue mode and stringless. And then we've seen all the damage differences and potential. Uh, we noticed that because of my stats, the prototype crescent and the black cliff had relatively equal. Beard as a hunt was weaker in crit damage, but gives you crit rate and a very nice passive for him. R5 Rust does the same amount of damage for Q, less damage slightly on charge attack, but increases the normal attack normal attack damage by a significant amount, which is expected. Windblow mode increases vaporize damage by quite a bit on the Q. Um, and then normal charge attack damage is relatively equal and, and probably buffed because of the attack by 32%, which is what we tested here. And stringless is weaker on the normal damage and charge attack damage, but significantly stronger on Q, especially with vaporize. Now, let's get to the five stars. We'll test almost bow first. And these are the stats with almost bow. We have 2.2k attack, which is significantly stronger. Same 60 crit rate and 160 crit damage, um, 90.4 hydro. So let's see how much damage we do here. All right, first time is no vaporize. Okay. Did not crit. Let's first test this out though. 5.2, 8.19.7. That is insane. All right. The passive on the almost bow. Um, oh wait, actually it does. So. Uh, because, so the normal and charge attack damage is increased by 24%, which is a significant boost, right? So not only do we have a 90% uh, Hydro damage, is actually plus 24% here from just the strict passive. And then I'm not sure if we get any of the 16% here, but... Uh, and unfortunately I can't test, so... But definitely significantly stronger. Okay. Pop this off. 43.75k crit. Alright, that is what I expected. Alright, let's test Q damage with Vaporize. Hopefully we crit. Alright, let's get outside. 106.5, which is slightly weaker than the Windbloom Ode because it doesn't have the Elemental Mastery boost and weaker than the Stringless R5. So this is all expected. The raw damage is greater, but the Vaporize damage is weaker. Still fairly strong though, right? Since you don't need, since you're not building all elemental mastery with almost, uh, still a very strong weapon to use. Very heavy stat stick, very capable. All right, and the final bow for testing, the Skyward Harp at R5. So big comparison between R5 almost versus the R5 Skyward Harp. We do sacrifice our attack and it's at 1.9K versus 2.2, but we gain 20 crit rate. Now we're at 81.9 and also, we gained an immense amount of crit damage. We're not 200% crit damage. So, even if we do do higher numbers, also realize that we have higher crit rate, which means that it's more consistent. Yes. Let's test the base damage with no vaporize at all. We're gonna be ignoring the white text damage because that is the physical part of the uh, Skyward's proc. We'll only be looking at the blue damage. All right, let's test. Get this off. Q damage, 42.6, very nice. 4.6, 7.1, So 4.6, 7.1, 8 And we actually killed the boss, okay. I gotta wait three minutes. So this damage is slightly weaker than the almost to start because it doesn't have the normal charge attack gain, but we are critting more often. So definitely keep that in mind. Alrighty, Q vaporized damage now. All right, let's test. Q damage is 103.8k, which is expected. All right, so that I think uh, should wrap up all the weapons. So between the two five stars, which is what we just tested, right? So between these two five stars, the almost R5 with my the same artifacts that I have does slightly more. 43.7Q, 5.2 normal attack, and an 8.1, 9.7 charged. The Vaporize did 106.5. The Harp did about two and a half percent weaker. Very, very small difference. Uh, the Q damage did 42.6K, and then the Normal did 4.6. The Charge did 7.1, 8.5. Uh, the Normal and Charge did about 10% weaker, but that's because of this passive, right? Normal Charge Attack damage increased by 24%. The Q damage from the Harp did slightly less. Um, you, can t you can take this as because the Skyward Harp gives you 22 crit rate, right? 
it's going to be critting it more consistently. So I would say that I would still use the high Skyward Harp in this case. But if you do have the R5 almost, it is still very insane. And uh, at equal refinement, I would say they're, they should be pretty similar, right? Like you still be getting a shit ton of attack percent. This is the only bot that's going to be decreasing. Instead of 24%, you're going to be getting 12%, which is still a, a very big amount. Very solid stuff. Um, that should wrap up the testing for all of the weapons. So from the prototype Crescent to the Blackliff Warbow, to the Viridescent Hunt and the R5 Rust, we have equivalent damage from the prototype Crescent and the Blackliff are bout with no passive added on. Viridescent Hunt crits more often and the passive benefits the, the type of bow that it, or the type of character that Tartag is, um, but less crit damage. R5 Rust, same amount of Q damage, slightly less charge attack damage than these two, but better normal attack damage. Windbloom Ode is higher vaporized damage with elemental mastery and then equivalent based off of level 90 and the 32% that we're procking here. So the Windbloom Ode is theoretically slightly weaker because we did proc this passive, but we didn't proc these ones. Keep that in mind. Stringless is purely used for Q burst damage because the normal and charge attack is much weaker. And then R5 almost in Skyward Harp. So hope that wraps everything up. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, weapon comparison video and then um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.